Here is a challenge and exercise for you. Next time you have your camera in your hands, ready to shoot, stop. Turn off your camera, put it down. I mean, have your hands free, sit down somewhere and ask yourself one single question. Why? Why do I want to film that subject? Or why do I want to shoot that action? Why do I want to move my camera from A to B? Simply question each decision you are taking as a filmmaker and have a valid argument for it. Don't just do it because you can. It is interesting that sometimes simply putting on the brakes will force our brains to analyze more deeply what we are about to film. Adding meaning to our movement and framing where the subject or action guides the camera will spare our footage from becoming repetitive, pointless and plain old boring. In this tutorial we'll learn how to add creative and meaningful camera movement to your shots instead of randomly filming and hoping for the best. Here's an idea template you can use to distill your intentions behind each shot that will help you come up with a motivated movement. This shot is about blank. Example. This shot is about two friends having a fun time with kites at a cabin in the woods. What isn't motivated camera movement? Perhaps the best way to explain this is to give examples of unmotivated camera movement. Unmotivated movement doesn't necessarily mean dull by definition, and it's not wrong. There is always a place for it in an edit, such as establishing shots, close-ups, push-ins or push-outs, pans or tilts. They either enhance an emotion or prepare the audience for what is to come. They should always advance and support the story. If they are not, they should not be included. Generally, unmotivated camera movement is where the camera moves on its own accord without following the action. The trick here is to avoid filming something just for the sake of the camera movement, since the audience will sense that and will reduce their attention from what is actually happening in the scene, focusing more on the camera movement itself. Unless, of course, you are trying to attract attention to the camera movement. Unmotivated camera movement is not at all wrong. It can heighten emotion, focus the viewer's attention in a logical way and sustain the story. Many directors use this very effectively in their movies. Motivated camera movement, on the other way, is simply moving the camera for a certain reason. As a reaction to the action happening in the frame. The subject or action leads, defines and guides the camera motion from the beginning to the end of a shot in a seamless and natural way. You could just as well cut from one action to the other in two separate shots, but notice how the movement continuity adds a natural flow to the action connecting the story arc. There is always a defined characteristic within a motivated camera movement and that is change. Something that starts developing from the beginning of the clip to the last frame and it has an element of reveal adding a foundation to the narrative. Let's look at a few motivated camera examples. Object leading. Here the subject or action will lead the camera movement from point A to point B. This can be done in a variety of ways like tracking, following, leading and so on. The camera is simply following the subject in a manner that is almost telling us to tag along with them since they are on a mission. Movement exchange. A fluid way to hand off the attention from one subject to another without the need of a cut is by following the first subject and exchange the lead to the next when this intersects the trajectory of the first or when it enters the frame. Depending on the positioning of these subjects, you might need to readjust the focusing from the leading subject to the next. The halt point can be defined as a reaction shot to a certain revelation. The movement motivation starts with the subject leading the camera to the rest point which becomes the most important part of that shot. Think of it as a resolution or realization at the end of that path. Pick up. This movement could be designed by starting with a static shot that becomes motivated when someone appears in the frame and starts leaning the camera. Side follow. Here we can guide the camera by following the side direction of a person who's turning their head towards an object of interest. Again, there is no need for a cut since there is a natural implied follow of the motion as it starts with anticipation and ends with the resolve. Motivated camera movement might require certain planning and choreography. This can be done by practicing the movement before shooting or, if you are more detailed, using storyboarding or apps like Shot Designer or Storyboarder. It depends, of course, on your filming style or time you have on hand. The important thing to notice in motivated and unmotivated camera movement is that in both cases, the camera moves. 
This by definition will add dynamicity to your shots, which after all are moving stills instead of single frame photographs. Perhaps the most important thing to get out of this lesson is that our camera movement design, be that motivated or unmotivated, should enhance the story and channel the viewer's attention to what's happening in the frame in a natural and seamless way. Once the viewer becomes aware of the actual movement, we might run into the dangers of robbing the shot of its actual importance, the story. Hope you find these tips on camera movement useful, and if you did, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not, and I'll see you in the next one.